greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, what a God we serve. He's the living God. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is amazing. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He loves us so much, he will not leave us alone. He will not leave us where we're at. He's con he continues to push us. He is, I want to tell you something right now. Like Paul said, we're, we're like in this boxing match or we're in this great race. Your number one fan is Jesus Christ. I mean, he is saying, go, go, go. God is for us. God is for us. We are no longer slaves to Satan. We are no longer slaves to sin. We've been liberated out of the prison by the blood of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something. How much does God love us? For God so loved the world. He sent his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is how much God loves us. He sent his son, the image of God, God in the flesh. He took on flesh. He was born of the virgin, DNA of God, placed inside Mary, Miriam the virgin. It was talked about in Isaiah 7. It was talked about in the Torah. It was talked about in the Old Covenant. And it's talked about in the New Covenant. He was born of the virgin, DNA of God. DNA of God placed inside God in the flesh. Sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Wow, wow, wow. What a salvation because God loved us and God is for us. And I want to talk to you today. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, today is your day. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in your blood. Baptize me with your power. Make me a soldier of the cross. That fast, he'll take you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we welcome you to the kingdom of God. Jesus is waiting. His arms are open. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. He came and paid with his life. Lamb of God, he gave his life for you. And wow, I just want to say he never loses. He never loses. God never loses. No matter how it looks out there, how wicked, how dark, how gross, God never loses. And I'm talking about the living God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, never lost a battle. Lord, come from the four winds, O breath of God, and just breathe through us and breathe on our dry bones. And God, open our hearts that we can understand the word of God, that we can understand what you're saying. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now today, I want to talk to you this morning, and I feel it's something important, and it's kind of a spinoff of Revelation 12, because, you know, a lot of people are talking about Revelation 12, so when, when did Jesus Christ take over as ruler of this world? Okay? Now we know Adam and Eve gave gave their portion to Satan. And so I am in Luke 4, okay? And Satan is testing the Lord. And it says in Luke 4, verse 5, he led him up, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said, I will give you all this domain and its glory because it's been handed over to me and I give it to whoever I wish. This is a true statement. The world, the dominion, everything that God had given Adam and Eve was handed over to the devil. But God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So I want to tell you, Jesus 
mentioned in Luke 10, verse 16. He says, I was watching Satan fall like lightning. Behold, I've given you authority. Now this is God speaking to you. I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy because you're not of this world. You're of the kingdom of God. You're born again into a living hope, never gonna die. He gives you eternal life. He makes you a new creation. He gives you an endless life. And so he's saying to his disciples, I've given you authority to tread on the serpents, the scorpions, and over all, A-L-L, all the power of the enemy. And nothing will injure you. Okay? He said, nevertheless, now look what he says, nothing will injure you. This is amazing. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice your names are recorded in heaven. And you know, he started out by saying, I was watching Satan fall like from heaven, like lightning. Because they, re they return, they, they said, wow, God, even the demons are subject. And the Lord said, I was watching Satan like lightning fall from heaven. At this very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit. And he said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father. For this was well-pleasing in your sight. Now look what he says. All things have been handed over to me by the Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son and anyone whom the Son wills to reveal to him. Okay, and he's saying no one knows who the Son is. I mean, could you imagine all the children that were killed, the two-year-old Satan always trying to wipe out this, this generation of male children looking for that Messiah. Because Satan knew when the Jewish Messiah, when Christ appeared, this was it. This was the end of his, his throne. This was the end of his lordship over the, over the world. This was the end of his dominion. And then he goes to the disciples. He says, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Many prophets of old looked for these days. They longed to see these days, but they weren't able to see them. They weren't able to hear what you hear. And then the Lord goes on and he said, now, he said, judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Okay? And he said, if I be lifted up, all men will be drawn to me. And then he goes on in Ephesians. Now look what Paul is saying in Ephesians. And this is so important for us right now that we don't believe these false prophecies, this divination, uh, paying attention to all these YouTubes. We need to pay attention to the word of God. We need to pay attention to truth. We need to be lovers of truth so we can quickly discern. Wait a minute, that doesn't line up with what Jesus said. Look what Paul said. I pray that the, and this is Ephesians chapter one. He prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory and Lord, this is my prayer right now for everyone listening. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you will know which is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his inheritance in the saints? Come on, you're part of the kingdom of God. You're in the marvelous light. You're not, you're, you're not born. You're born again, a new creation. You're born again to a living hope. You're not part of this world. He left you here as ambassadors for him. And look what he goes on to say. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you will know the hope of his calling, his calling in your life, which are the riches 
of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now look, which is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about, the Father brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, and every name that's named, not only in this age, but the one to come. And what did he do? He put everything in subject under his feet and gave him as head of everything. He is the ruler of the world. He is the ruler of the universe. He sits at the right hand of glory. And when did all this happen? When the, the blood dripped from his hands, he was the sacrifice. He came because God so loved the world. He came so God so loved the world. It was a sign at the cross of Calvary. It was a sign at the blood of the lamb. This is where it was. This is where the sin of the world was placed upon him. This is where he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He came up and offered his blood. He offered his blood to the Father, the Lamb of God. And God seated him at the right hand of glory. And he gave him the world. He gave him the universe. He gave him everything, everything he gave to Jesus Christ, that the fullness of everything would be in his beloved son. Yeah, this is what happened. This is what happened and this is when it happened. When he gave his life at the cross, he disarmed the principalities. He made a spectacle out of them. He, Satan lost his power, lost his ruling and reigning at Calvary. He lost it at Calvary. And Jesus Christ presented it to God the Father. And it was a sweet sacrifice to God the Father acceptable, not the blood of bulls and goats, but the blood, the DNA of God given to God, redeeming us, redeeming us. He is the ruler of the universe and he rules from on high and he is the ruler of this world. All dominion, power, glory, and honor was given to Jesus Christ. Now that's the answer that you're looking for right now. Not in a sign from the stars or the storms. It's from the cross. That's where our answer is. That's where our lifeline is. That's where our doorway is into eternity, people. That's it. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and make his face shine upon you. And Lord, I thank you. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Let his people go. We say false doctrine, doctrine of devil's prophecies that are false. Yeah, fall in the name of Jesus. God bless you.